Hi everybody, Russ here. Thanks for stopping by the channel. What I'd like to do in this video is take you through a no frills walkthrough of the Fly app for the new DJI Avada FPV drone. So now just a reminder that if you think this video is getting a little bit too long, there are timestamps in the video description to navigate to certain parts of the video. So hopefully that makes it a little more convenient for you. This video is gonna be about 20 minutes long, but I will be speaking a little bit fast, possibly for some of you. So if you need to slow down the playback speed, just know that you can do that. Go ahead and click on the little gear icon and you can do this with any YouTube video and you can change the playback speed. So it'll slow down the video. So I'll talk slower but it won't change the voice. So the voice will be the same, it'll just be a little bit uh, a little bit slower. So just a little tip for you there if I happen to be speaking a little bit too fast. So let's get right to it. In order to get into the menu on the new DJI Goggles 2, there's a little swipe screen or touch screen on the right hand side of the Goggles 2. And so the first one that I wanna show you, the first menu is you're gonna swipe down from the top and that's gonna bring up this menu right here. The first one is record. If you hit that button, you, hit the, you tap the uh, touch screen, that's gonna start recording video right there. To stop it, go ahead and tap it again, that's gonna stop recording. Now for the most part, most of you are gonna be using the record button on your motion controller or on your FPV controller, but there may be times when you wanna use the menu to start recording. Next one is the screen lock. If you tap that, that's gonna lock that touchpad. So no matter what you do, no matter where you tap on it, nothing's gonna come up, nothing's gonna happen. So that can be pretty convenient. And to unlock it, you just hold on the touchpad with two fingers and that unlocks it. Next one is the enhanced display. What this does, you tap on that, that just increases the contrast. So there it is off, there it is on. I don't like it in particular, so I usually don't have that one on, but there might be situations where it may be useful. Head tracking is for when you're using the motion controller, so you can control the yaw of the drone by moving your head. Now that only works with the motion controller that does not work with the FPV controller. It's kind of fun, it's a little bit gimmicky, but I think it's something that everybody should try. Here's your brightness, you can adjust the brightness of the goggles, you can turn it all the way up, just know that it's gonna drain your battery. Turn it all the way down, that might be a little bit too dark, so I just leave that one in the middle. And then the next one is the uh, volume. You're just gonna adjust the volume of your goggles with that. Now to go back from any menu or any setting, you're gonna use two fingers, tap on the touchpad, and that's gonna take you backwards. Now the next menu I wanna show you is you're gonna swipe from the left to the right on the touchpad. And right here, you're gonna click on status. Now this is gonna show if there's anything that needs to be addressed with the Avada. Maybe you need to calibrate your compass or maybe you're in a geo unlock zone. You can see right here, mine says aircraft in low power state. Um, not sure, that happens sometimes. I'm actually not sure why that happens or what causes that, but it's usually not an issue. I just fly with that on, so. But this just lets you know if there's anything that needs to be addressed. If you go up here and you click on switch, this is gonna show you any drones that might be in the immediate area that you can connect your DJI goggles to. So right now, of course, we only have the Avada, uh, so that's what it is connected to. We're gonna use two fingers to go back, and we're gonna go down. This is your album. This is gonna show you your album of any recordings that you have taken, and it's gonna only show you the goggles recording. It's not gonna show you the video that you recorded on the SD card or on the internal drive on your drone, it's only gonna show you the goggles recording. So just be aware of that. Back out of there, this is transmission right here. This is for if you wanna broadcast. So let's, let's say that someone else has a set of goggles and they wanna watch as you fly, then you would start broadcasting right here. You just click on and then they would be able to connect by going to their DJI Fly app, going to the audience tab, and then it would, your goggles would show up right here. Okay, so right now, of course, we don't uh, have any other goggles in the area, so it's not gonna connect, so. But that's how that works. This focus mode, uh, you either have off or auto. I actually, to be honest with you, I don't even know what this is for. I've never used it. I've just always had it on auto. I think it, what it does is it kind of blurs the sides of the screen, but I don't know when. I don't know when this comes into play. I haven't read about it or anything, so I apologize for that, but I can't actually tell you what that one does, but I just leave it on auto. And then down here is channel mode. I just leave this on auto because I think the software knows what's best, but if you feel like you know what you're doing, go ahead and click on manual and you can change the channel and, and the bandwidth and things like that. But, uh, but I just recommend leaving that one in audio. So we're gonna back out of there. 
The next one is settings. Now this is where most of the important settings are. The really important settings, safety, is where you're gonna set your maximum flight altitude. Now you can't choose an exact amount anymore. I think you could before. I just updated the Avada this morning and there's a few changes uh, that I'll talk about here in just a second when I get to the camera settings. But So you can change it to 328, 394, of course in the United States. Uh, the maximum height we can fly is 400 feet above ground level, so I just leave it set to 394. I think that gives us a little bit of a cushion. So right here is maximum flight distance. You can set this to be whatever you want. I just leave it on no limit, but maybe you might want a reminder that, hey, you're getting out a little bit too far. You can set this to whatever distance you want, but I always have left this on no limit on all of my drones. Right here is the return to home altitude. This one is particularly important for the Avada because the Avada does not have obstacle avoidance. So if you're going to fly in an area that you're not familiar with, and maybe there's an obstacle that's, you know, let's say an obstacle tree that's 100 feet high, and you have the set to 98 feet, and then your drone loses connection and returns to home, guess what? There's a good chance it's gonna hit that tree. So make sure that you're aware of your area and just make sure that you have your return to home altitude set higher than the highest obstacle in the area. Right here is the update home point. This is important if you're gonna be flying, if you're gonna be traveling away from the launch point. So let's say you launch your Avada and then you become a passenger in a vehicle and you drive uh, away from the launch point and you're flying the drone and for some reason the drone loses connection. Well, guess what? It's gonna go back to where you launched it from and you might not want that. You wanna bring it to where you are. So this is where you would click on and this would set a new home point. So if you hit return to home, it's gonna come back to wherever you set that home point. Wherever the controller is at that time, that's where the drone's going to come back to when you hit the return to home button or if it comes back automatically. So pretty important one there. Right here is where you can calibrate the compass, the IMU, the Google goggles compass, and the goggles IMU. I've actually only had to calibrate my compass once, but my goggles IMU, I've had to calibrate that several times. Anytime I go to a different area, I've had to calibrate my IMU. So that one actually comes up quite frequently, but all the other ones... Uh, not very often at all. Camera view before loss. This is going to show you if your drone crashes or you lose connection and you don't know where it is, you can watch this. This is the last video uh, before it lost signal or before it crashed. It's going to show you and that's going to give you an idea. Oh yeah, that's where I was. So it's going to help you navigate to where your drone might be laying in the grass or laying in the field or whatever. So so that one's pretty cool. This is ESC beeping. What this is going to do, it's going to make your drone beep. It's going to help you find it, again, if it's like in an area you're not familiar with, maybe some tall grass, it's going to make that noise right there. So uh, so that's pretty nice. Advanced safety settings right there. Click on that. What's going to happen if you lose signal? I always keep mine set to return to home, but you can also have it land or hover in place. Maybe you don't want it to... Uh, maybe you don't want it to come back home, so I would change that before the hand. Right here is air sense. This is going to let you know if there's any aircraft in the area, any manned aircraft. And then this is emergency propeller stop. If you engage this, just know that if you're flying and you pull the sticks down and in or down and out, it's going to it's going to crash. It's going to come crashing to the ground. So this is an emergency setting. If you have like maybe there's a imminent collision with something, and you're like you have no other choice, you have to crash your drone. That's what that's for. So use that at your discretion. Let's go back out here. And then we're going to go down to control. Now this is, you can set your um, button customizations for your C1 and your C2 buttons. You can see there on the screen, the C1's on the left-hand side and the C2's on the right-hand side. For C1, you have two options, okay? You can do turtle mode or ESC beeping. Turtle mode is when the drone is upside down. You hit turtle mode and it's going to flip itself over and you can get right back to flying. So I have used that many, many times. So there you can set single press or double press. You just set one to single press and set the other one to double press. Now here on the right hand side is your toggle C2 button. You can set this one to five different settings. ESC beeping, gimbal up, recenter, gimbal down, or you can use it to stop the motors. I have this set to the top to gimbal up. The middle one set to center gimbal, and then the bottom one is gimbal down. So I'll show you what that looks like here. I'm gonna go out of the menu. So if I hit straight ahead, it's gonna put the gimbal down. In the middle, go straight ahead, and then pull it back, it's gonna go up. So of course I'm not gonna launch from here, but you can see that's what that switch does. So let's get back into the menu. And go back down to settings, and back into control. And then if you go over, this is your stick mode. 
most of the time, 99% of the time, you're going to be flying in mode two. This is gain and expo. This is where you can set your roll pitch and yaw sensitivities, max rate and expo. I highly recommend leaving these on the default, you know, until you get a little bit more experienced. Uh, when you get into manual flight, you can change those to whatever you're liking. But for now, I really, really don't think you should mess with those. This one right here, if you toggle this off, that, that's one of the things that you have to do to fly manually. Now, I'm not going to show you that in this video, but I am going to put a link in the video description for my favorite video that's been put out so far on how to fly the Avada manually. So check that out. If you're ready to start flying manually, um, go ahead and watch that video, and that's going to get you started. So, And then the next one is just um, RC calibration. This is where you can calibrate your sticks. Okay, let's go down to gimbal pitch speed. And right here we have slow, normal, and fast. So let me show you what slow looks like. I'm just gonna do that and let's roll the gimbal down. There, I got full gimbal. As you can see, that's super slow. Let's go down to normal. And that's what you're gonna have it on most of the time. I think that's what most people like. But some people like the fast mode where the gimbal just goes up and down very quickly. So use that however you like. Gimbal calibration, this is gonna calibrate your gimbal in case something's off, something seems a little bit off or maybe it asks you to, you can calibrate the gimbal right there. Here's where you can adjust your units. You can change it from imperial to metric or vice versa. Right here, invert horizontal swipe. I recommend not doing that. Just leave that one alone. This is turtle mode. This I spoke about a little bit, but if you come to the menu right here, click here and your drone's gonna flip itself back over. But again, I recommend just hitting the C1 button and that's gonna give you turtle mode. And then right here is Google, uh, Google's goggles tutorials. This is gonna give you a tutorial on how to use the goggles, but for me, I like watching YouTube videos more, so I would rather do that. But, uh, but that's there in the menu in case you wanna do that. So right here is your camera settings. You can change your aspect ratio from 16.9 to 4.3. The video quality, now this is a change I've noticed since the update today. I could have swore that we had 4K 30 before. We don't have it anymore. So right now, 50 frames per second is the slowest uh, frame rate that you can do. The thing that, that I noticed is when you had it in 4K 30, then you could come to the field of view and you could change this to wide field of view, but you can't do that anymore. It's just normal. Now the electronic image stabilization, you can do horizon steady, or you can do real ste a rock steady. Horizon steady just keeps your horizon level. Okay, it keeps everything perfectly straight lined. Rock steady just is nice and smooth, makes everything really cinematic or you can turn off your stabilization. Auto ice, ISO limit, I just keep that at 6400. I usually don't fly in darker situations. 6400 is pretty grainy. I, I just leave it there just because it's nice to have the max, the maximum amount of light. Just know that it's gonna get pretty grainy. You can turn on your grid lines. Uh, you can turn on center point or your um, rule of thirds or things like that. I usually just leave mine off just because I'm not really using the Avada to get cinematic content or rule of thirds or things like that. but. Uh, but you might want to have your grid lines. This is where you can have the center point turned on, so that's going to give you a little circle in the center of the screen. Here's where you can look at how much storage you have left on your SD card or on the hard drive, and then here's where you can format your SD card. That's back out of there. So there you can format your goggles, your aircraft, or your internal storage. You can choose which one that you want to um, do. Advanced camera settings right here. This is where you can record with both the goggles and the drone, or you know, one or the other. It shows you the camera view and recording. You can turn that on or off. You can do auto record on takeoff. So like when you take off, it's gonna automatically hit the record button. Here you can uh, engage d like mode. So if you wanna get that flat look and then do some editing afterwards and do some uh, color correction and, and color grading, things like that, you can change to d like So that's kind of nice on an FPV drone. Anti-flicker, just leave that on auto. And then video subtitles, if you wanna have those on the screen, uh, that's available as well. And right here is where you can reset everything to the default. All right, now here's the display menu. You can change the brightness of your display right here, but you can just use the top menu for that as well. Uh, display scaling, not sure you want it, why you'd want to shrink this down, but this is what happens when you do it. It just shrinks down to there. I just recommend leaving that at 100%. And then right here, home point, that's going to show you the H. When you're flying, it's gonna show the H as your launch location. So I like having that on. Some people don't like it because it's distracting, but I actually prefer having that on. So, And then right here shows you all the firmware that you currently have on your drone, your goggles, your batteries, everything. And then let's back out. And then right here, if you can use the DJI Virtual Flight app to practice flying manually. I actually like liftoff better. I've been practicing with liftoff. I've gotten better with liftoff. 
but you can use virtual flight uh, if you want to. So right here you can wirelessly stream. So this means that if you want to watch YouTube on your mobile device, you can watch it on your goggles. And so that's pretty cool. And let's go ahead and back out of here. Now the last one I want to show you, you're going to swipe up from the bottom of the touchpad. And this is going to give you quick access to all of your camera settings. So if you can leave, if you leave it on auto, you're still going to be able to adjust your exposure compensation, your white balance, your aspect ratio, your video quality, all these things you can still adjust. But if you switch to manual mode, okay, then you can adjust your ISO, your shutter speed, and all of those things. So for the most part, I think auto is the way to go. And then if you want to adjust your exposure at all, you can just adjust it through the exposure compensation. Oops. This touchpad is very touchy. That is one of the negative things about these goggles. It's very, very touchy. So, but you know, if you want to adjust your exposure, you can do that right here. So, all right. Uh, and then the, also, this is where you can switch from video mode to photo mode just by tapping right there. So now one more thing that I want to show you before I end the video here on the display. If you look in the lower left-hand corner right now, we are in normal mode. That's what most beginners are going to start in. Normal mode is going to make the drone move just a little bit slower, a little more cinematic. But let's say you're ready to fly faster. You can go ahead and switch that toggle to sport mode. And then you're going to be able to fly faster and have a little more fun. Um, I actually only fly in sport mode now. So, And then the third toggle right now, the default is going to be in sport mode. But if you're ready to fly manual, uh, that's what you're going to do. You're going to flip it into M mode. And then there's a few other things that you have to do. Like I said, if you want to know the detailed way to do that, just watch that video down in the description. Next to that S right there, you can see that you have the height and the distance. The height's going to show you the height above the launch point. Distance is going to show you the distance away from the launch point. The speeds are the horizontal speed and the vertical speed. So you keep an eye on those, see how fast you're going both up and forward or backwards or sideways. Um, if you look over to the right hand side, that's the amount of battery that's left on the Avada. And then your flight time is right next to that. Right next to that is your signal strength. The RC signal strength shows you how much how strong the signal is from the remote controller to the drone. And then the HD is how strong the signal is from the video feed from the drone to your goggles. So those might vary a little bit. Right there is the bit rate of the video feed. Right now we're at seven megabits per second. Next to that, it shows you how many satellites that your drone's connected to. So right now it's kind of fluctuating between 18 and 20 satellites. On the far right hand side in the bottom there, that's gonna show you how much battery is left on your goggles too. If you go straight up from that, you can see how much recording time is left on the SD card. Or if you're recording on the internal drive, it's gonna show you how much time you have left on the internal drive. And then the one below that shows you how much recording time is left on the goggles. So you can see I have 26 left on my SD card and 54 minutes left on the goggles. That's just a quick run through, walk through of the DJI Fly App for the Avada. I know it's a lot of information, so if you have any questions, or if you have any comments or anything like that, let me know down in the comments and I'll answer every single question that's down there. I really wanna help you guys understand this menu. If you got any value out of this video, please click on that thumbs up button. That really helps the video out. And if you wanna subscribe and see more content like this and become part of the community, I would love to have you join this growing community. I got a lot more Avada content coming. I got some other drone content. I got some other electronics and technical things. So. All kinds of new stuff coming during tech season here on 51 drones so be sure to subscribe for that follow me on social media too we have a lot of fun over there on TikTok and instagram reels and uh a nice way fun way to contact me is through twitter so you know if those are your thing go ahead and follow me there as well i want you to have a great day thanks so much for watching the video and as always fly safe and fly smart